actually followed. In fact, a two-step process is followed. And in this two-step process, an important intermediate known as the oxaloacetate molecule is used. So gluconeogenesis bypasses step 10 via two-step reaction pathway that involves the oxaloacetate intermediate. And if we sum up those two steps, this is the reaction that we're basically going to get. So pyruvate plus ATP plus GTP plus a water molecule gives us that PEP molecule that we want, the ADP, GDP, and orthophosphate, and 2H plus ions. And this makes this reaction an exergonic reaction. Unlike this reaction, that would be an endergonic reaction. Now, by the same exact reasoning, steps three and one are also uh, bypassed by using this step and this step respectively. So in each one of these steps, we, we basically use a simple hydrolysis reaction. And we'll talk about the details of that in the next lecture. So we see that step three is bypassed via an exergonic hydrolysis of fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into a fructose 6-phosphate. So this is hydrolyzed by water and the activity of a special enzyme to produce the fructose 6-phosphate and the orthophosphate. And step one is bypassed by another hydrolysis reaction by, that, is basically, that is basically catalyzed by a different enzyme to form that glucose molecule. So once again, gluconeogenesis is not simply the reverse of glycolysis, although there are steps that are exactly the same. So in fact, there are seven steps that are the same. The other steps are not the same. And the reasoning is because gluconeogenesis, if it simply followed the reverse steps of glycolysis, it would be a very endergonic reaction.